What's up, guys? Welcome back to the iOS dev channel, maxcodes.io. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use UI segmented control in Swift UI along with WebKit and UI View Representable. And we're going to be updating this all with Swift UI State. So it's actually extremely simple due to reactive programming and the nature of Swift UI. And I think that if you watch this video, your Swift UI skills and your iOS programming skills in general will be greatly enhanced. And I think you're really going to gain some value out of this video. So by the end of this video, you will know how to use WebKit and things like map view inside of Swift UI. So I'm going to show you how to combine stuff like UI, UI view controller features into Swift UI apps. I'm also going to show you how to use segmented controls. So you're going to know how to use segmented controls inside of your apps. You're also going to know how to use state and navigation view in Swift UI. So you're going to gain a lot of value out of this video and I'm going to show you how to do each of those things right now. So the first thing we want to do is kind of take this off the screen and I'll drag it back if we need to reference it. But what we're going to do is just create a new Xcode project and we're going to make sure we choose single view app and make sure that use Swift UI is selected. And I'm going to go ahead and just call this web pages Swift UI. Okay, sweet. So again, pretty cool features. I'm really excited to show you all how to do this. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it. So we have our project loaded up here and I'm going to hit resume on this preview. Now you probably already know this, but if you're on Mojave, then you're just going to want to compile to the iPhone XR and you should be goody to go. But I'm going to be using the live preview, which is what this code is for right here. Okay, so I'm going to push that out of the way because I don't really want to see that too much. And uh, yeah, let's uh, start writing some code. Okay, so the first step is to introduce navigation views. Okay, so I'm going to put a comment here and say concept one navigation view. So that's that's what we're going to be learning the first concept here. Okay, and I'll list out the concepts as we go on just so you can kind of keep track of what you're learning in this video. Okay, now I'm going to say navigation view. And I'll put that text back in there. And we now have a navigation view that if we hit play, it's probably not going to show us too much because we don't really have a title on this navigation view. So what I want to do is wrap this text in a V stack so that everything's vertical, like in the app I just showed you. And then what I'm going to do is give it a navigation bar title. So let's go ahead and cut that out and say V stack. Okay. And then what we'll do is on the V stack, we'll simply say dot navigation bar title. And then we'll throw in some text into that set of parentheses that says web pages. Okay, because we're building a little web page application, right? Kind of cool. Okay, perfect. So you'll see we have our navigation bar title, and you've now learned a little bit more about navigation, okay, if you didn't already know that in Swift UI. Okay, so the next concept I want to talk about is web views, right? We want to get a web view on the screen so that we can see some awesome. Uh, stuff in here with UI view representable. So there's really two concepts here. We'll say concept two is UI view represent, <laughs> represent, representable. And concept three is going to be web view or WebKit in Swift UI, right? Because a lot of you probably already know how to use WebKit, but you've probably never used it in Swift UI and you probably don't know where to start, right? You might think, okay, well, all we have to do is import WebKit, which I want you to do right now. Go ahead and import WebKit and then say like, I don't know, WK WebView, right? But you can't actually do this because there's no frames in Swift UI and it doesn't really work that way, right? So how do we do that? Well, that's where UI view representable comes in. Let's go ahead and learn about this. What I want you to do is declare a new struct, which is going to be a UI view representable. We'll say web view and we'll make this of type UI view representable. And I'll zoom in just in case this code's a bit too small. Okay, so now what we want to do in here is kind of set up our web view. How do we do this? Well, let's first hit fix here and see what it gives us. It says type alias UI view type is equal to type. We can get rid of that. What I want to do instead is introduce a request. Okay, we'll say let request is equal to, sorry, is of type URL request. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we kind of need to pass in each one of these titles for our web view, right? We have slash courses, and we have developer.apple.com. We want that to go into the URL request so that we can pass it to WebKit and display a web page. So go ahead and type that in. And then now what we want to do is just introduce two methods from WK WebView. We'll say make UI view or 
that will help us with WebView, right? And you'll see we get this. Now we can greatly reduce the amount of code in this parameter here by just kind of getting rid of this parameter type and just saying context. Okay, we can also just return the WK web view since that's the same thing as webview.uiview type. So we'll say WK web view. Okay, next thing we want to do is just return an empty instance of WK web view. Pretty simple. Okay, now what we want to do is actually load that request. So how do we do that? Well, pretty simple. We just have to kind of listen to it. We have to say, okay, when the view is updated, so go ahead and type out this method update UI view. It says updates the represented updates the presented UI kit view and its coordinator to the latest configuration. Okay, so go ahead and hit return there. And in the code here, we can also reduce the amount of code in the parameters, right? So let's go ahead and let's see, let's just get rid of this context and just say that the type is of type context. Excellent, excellent. All right, next thing we want to do is simply say UI view because we're provided this UI view, which is of type WK web view, right? So we're provided our web, web view and all we have to do is say load and then pass in the request. Pretty simple stuff um, and we're good to go. That's really all it takes to implement the web view. But how do we kind of show it to our preview here? How do we get it on the screen? Well, I'll show you right now. Let's get rid of the text and let's just say web view. Okay, so we're using our class here, and you'll see since we have this let request right here, it's requiring that as a parameter, okay? All right, so if you've ever used a struct before, you probably already understand this concept, but you might have not like put it together, right? Like I didn't really think about it as being a required parameter until I realized, oh, it's a struct. Obviously, whatever you put in here as a let is going to be a required parameter. If you've ever dealt with data in any of my courses or something when making table views or the Pinterest layout, stuff like that in my uh, my courses that use structs. Anyway, don't wanna talk about that. I'm just saying uh, if you understand structs, then you understand that lets or constants are gonna be required parameters. Okay, so what do we put in here? Well, it wants us to put in an, a URL request. So how do we do this? Well, pretty simple. Let's just create a URL request, passing in a URL. And this URL, I'll drag this to the side temporarily just so we can see this bit better. And I'm going to say that the URL is a URL and we'll pass in the string one. Okay. So what I'm going to do is say HTTPS colon slash slash maxcodes.io. Well, I want to use developer.apple because it looks cleaner. So developer.apple.com. Okay, perfect. So go ahead and do that. And you'll see we get this little error. It just wants us to basically force unwrap it okay so if you use an incorrect kind of address it might not work like if you just put like hey there it might crash or something but that doesn't matter you could deal with unwrapping that if you want i'm just going to show you how to get this on the screen as quick as possible so we can learn these concepts okay so let's go ahead and compile that and we should see a web view on here somewhere at a point okay so not seeing it yet Ch -ch 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 -ch. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. I was really worried there for a second that it wasn't going to load. My internet was just being a little bit slow. Okay, so we're good there. And you'll see that this is already a ton of value. And it's just awesome. You can integrate this in your own iOS apps. It's almost like an app itself that you didn't even have to code, right? So you might use this for something like a banking app, right? I bank with a bank and uh, called Wells Fargo, right? or I have an account with them and they have a really terrible iOS app. But one of the features in that iOS app is that's pretty helpful is that they have like a web view in here that connects you to the website. And I'm not affiliated with Wells Fargo. I'm not like plugging them at all. I actually don't really like that bank. But what I'm saying here is that it's a cool feature that even top tier like companies use in their own iOS apps. So kind of interesting. Okay. So the last thing we want to do in this video is we kind of want to play around with segmented control. Now this is going to take a little bit of code, but no more than like five or so lines. So let's kind of, let's go ahead and just jump into it. Let's say concept four is going to be segmented control and let's say for each loops, cause we're going to learn a bit about that too. Oh, and state of course. So we'll say concept just cause that's a more big concept other than for each. I'll say concept five is state in Swift UI. Okay, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and start writing some state variables, okay? 
So what I want you to do is say at state, and we'll say file private. Well, we'll say private, and we'll say let, we'll say var selected website or selected segment, okay? And this is gonna be equal to zero, okay? Because this is gonna be a number. It's gonna be an index for our selected segment. Let's go ahead now and say state private var is equal to, let's say, let's call it um, websites, right? And we'll say this is uh, equal to an array of websites. So first website I'm gonna say is www.maxcodes.io slash podcast or let's say courses. And then I'll say developer.apple.com. Perfect. So I'm gonna change this to podcast just cause I released a podcast and it's about boot camps right now, the first episode. Anyway, don't want you to go watch that right now. I want you to watch my videos here. Okay, so what we're gonna say is we're gonna like basically for each over these websites and then uh, we're gonna have it load up the web view based on the selected segment, okay? So how do we kind of do this? Well, we don't want to put this in here. We actually want to get rid of this right here and use string interpolation. And basically we just wanna calculate the website by just saying websites at, okay, so an array, I'm sure you've used that before, and we'll say selected segment. So what this is gonna do, since it's zero, is by default, it's going to select this first website here, which means when I compile this, it's actually going to load up that website, right? So all we really need to do now is create a segmented control to kind of let us switch between these two websites, all right? Super dope, and uh, I'm really excited to show you this. So let's go ahead and do that right now. What we need to do is we need to create an H stack here. And in this H stack, we're going to create a segmented control. So we'll say segmented control. And we will select this provided initializer. Okay, now the binding needs to be selected segment, okay? So let's go ahead and say selected segment with a dollar sign because what this is saying is that it's binding now. It's not just a variable, the dollar sign is binding. Okay, now what this is gonna do is it's basically going to change the value based on the websites, right? So how do we do that? Well, we can just hit tab here in the content, hit return, and then in here, we just wanna type a for each loop. So I'll pull it out one more just so you can see all the code a bit better. And I'll say for each, and we'll say zero, dot, 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 all the way up to the websites.count. So there's gonna be two little iterations here. And then we'll just kind of define a text that is gonna have a value of, and we'll say self.websites, and we'll use dollar sign zero to get the first element or the element it's iterating over. So that could either be maxcodes.io or developer.apple.com, all right? Hopefully that makes sense. This is a little bit weird of a syntax. Uh, I know even Brian Vong over at Brian Vung over at Let's Build That App doesn't even like this syntax. And he's a professional, right? He's like a god at programming. All right. So what we're gonna do is say dot tag. I guess that doesn't really mean anything, it's just a preference. So I'm sure there's professionals that like that syntax. Anyway, what we're gonna do is say dot tag and put in the zero. So we're basically just tagging it with the associated array, a uh, space in the array. So when we select one of these items it's going to say, okay, that's a zeroth index. And when we select this one, it's gonna be the first index. So when we switch between these, this value is gonna switch between zero and one, okay? So then what it's gonna do is it's gonna reload this page or this uh, component here every time we kind of make this change, right? And that's what reactive programming is. If you've ever dealt with Angular or Vue or React, you're probably very familiar with these concepts. I am very uh, professional with React, so that's why this stuff is a little bit easier for me to understand from the get-go, all right? But if you don't understand these kind of concepts yet, you eventually will, and even if they might be intimidating right now, don't worry about it. If you just keep watching my videos and uh, Brian's videos and basically anybody who's making Swift UI videos, you're gonna come to an understanding of how these things work. And I really look forward to all of us learning these things. All right, so that's it for this video. 
And now that you're done watching, feel free to like it, subscribe, and even check out my podcast on my website, maxcodes.io slash podcast. Totally optional, not trying to plug that too much. I know that can be annoying, but it's there. And I just recorded that with uh, one of my friends. So yeah, it's about boot camps and uh, self-teaching. Okay, so that's it. Super glad I was able to record this video today. And I'll be back later with some more Swift UI videos. Catch you next time.